Welcome to the local campaign. Today our debate is for the residents of Ward 5, West Carleton March. We have three candidates who are here to debate the issues. They are all seeking your vote in the municipal election on October the 22nd. I'll introduce those candidates in just a moment, but first I'll go over the plan for the debate today. Each candidate will receive one minute to provide an opening statement. The order for those opening statements was drawn at random just before we began the telecast. Then we'll move to a series of debates about the important topics in the ward and throughout the city. Each, in each case, I will start the debate with a question directed at one of the candidates. He or she will have 45 seconds to respond to that question, and then we'll open it up to all of the candidates for debate on that topic. Once we wrap up the debate, we'll go back to the candidate to whom the question was originally addressed, and that candidate will have 30 seconds to wrap up. We'll move through a number of different topics that way, and then we'll have closing statements in the reverse order of the opening statements. So, let's meet the candidates who are seeking your vote in Ward 5 on October the 22nd. They are Judy Varga Toth, Eli L. Shantiri, and James Parsons. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us. We'll begin with the opening statements. And Judy Varga Toth, you are first. You have one minute. Thank you. West Carleton March needs a stronger, more focused voice at the council table. Our unique rural needs must be recognized and then addressed to allow us to thrive. Since the last election, we've gone backwards. We've lost our community-based police service. We have lost our rural public health nurse. We've lost two out of three community paramedics. Our roads are in terrible condition. And our seniors and youth in particular lack transportation choices and access to services and opportunities close to home. We can do better. I have new ideas and the experience, the energy, and the knowledge to bring results. I will not spend valuable time on matters that do not bring direct benefit to West Carleton March residents, small business owners, and farmers. I look forward to telling you more about how I'll work more closely with residents so that together we will bring rural results that work. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Eli El Shantiri. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hello. My name is Eli Al Shantiri. I'm asking for your support in my re-election as a councillor to West Carton March. I've been your municipal representative since 2003 and I have built very strong relationship at the City Hall and in the Ward 5 community. My wife Maha and I have been a part of Ward 5 community for over 30 years and we are happy to call it home. I have been actively involved in West Carton March long before becoming city councillor. In 2001, I received the West Carton Citizen of the Year Award during International Year of the Volunteer from 2001 to 2003. I serve as a board member of the Western Ottawa Community Resource Centre. I have dedicated many years of helping Bedford Ward 5 community many years before I become a city councillor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next up is James Parsons. Go ahead, you have one minute as well. Hello, my name is James Parsons. I moved to West Carlton from Carlsbad Springs area in 2006 in August for my children to go to school. I built my own home, took my own permits, including all permits, including the uh, site and grade plan, which I had to pay for in spite of the fact I did my own for the septic system which leads me to my campaign uh, platforms. The stormwater tax fee that is being applied to the properties in West Carlton because of the incumbent, he voted yes on the, on the council, city hall. So you are now paying that tax and I wish to repeal that tax for the public. I also wish to revamp the green bin program and bring back weekly garbage collection. The green bin program has uh, proven to be one of the worst contracts ever signed by the city. It is ineffective and almost half the people don't even use it to this date. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll now move into some debates that are on important topics for West Carleton March and the entire city. I'll start with a question to Judy Varga Toth. You'll have 45 seconds to respond to this question, then we'll open it up to debate among all the candidates. So the question is, should we continue to cap the police budget increases at 2% per year, or do we need more resources to address community safety, gun violence, and other issues? 
That's a fabulous question, and I think it's really important that we look very closely at what are our needs and priorities in the city of Ottawa. We know that residents want many things, and we know that we can only afford so many things. 2% is used uh, often, and the question is, is it too much? Is it too little? But it's really the wrong question. The question is, what are our priorities? So we do need to look at how we can provide effective policing, and currently, I'm hearing from ward residents that we feel that our police presence is not what it should be. Over the last four years, as I mentioned, we've lost our community-based police presence, and it is time to look at the priorities of the residents and then come up together with a number that works. Okay, it's open to all of you on this subject. So, just a small correction to my colleague on my right. First of all, we didn't lose the police-based community. It's still there. It's located in West Carlton Client Service Centre. We have dedicated police officers to our area. Uh, West Carlton March is one of the safest wards in the city of Ottawa when it comes to crime and, uh, and other complaints for traffic in other areas. So to suggest that, I don't think really that's a fair statement. To answer your question about cap and the, the police budget at 2%, uh, the police budget need to be reviewed and need to set the priority for the budget. Now, if we want more, obviously, are we willing to pay more? But there's other venue, and we are working with other level of government and trying to, to seek their help, basically uh, stop the, the gun trafficking from our border. Other social services need in our city and public health and mental health issues in our city were occupied a lot of our police times. Today, 30% of the police call is on mental health cases. So we need other level of government to step in. And if other level of government is not willing to help, well, obviously we need to review the budget and maybe uh, more than 2% need to be allocated to a police budget. I agree the police do a great job, but uh, can we work together more and do more? Absolutely. And hearing if from I our may, residents, yes, um, the, go ahead. The police services budget is probably the biggest line item on the city budget. Um, it currently has increased the number of police officers for the city uh, just a short while ago and they are scheduled to hire more coming forward. Uh, but the presence in West Carlton still stays at two. Yes. Uh, my neighbor had a very serious accident not so long ago, a week ago or ten days ago. Um, half an hour or more for the ambulance, police, fire, anybody to get to him, he's happy to be alive today. But um, do we need to increase the police budget for West Carlton? I think we need to look at other things. Uh, the uh, actual rate of um, solving crimes in West Carlton is, is fairly low, so adding more police officers to that may not make any difference. I need to add to this that we did have a consultation just recently, a rural policing consultation, which was brought about by uh, the great work of the Western Ottawa Community Resource Centre, in which the residents that attended, myself included, did raise the point that they felt that they did not receive the police services, as my colleague said, that they need in this ward. But, and it is very important for the residents to understand statistics shows why itself, is it that the police... Show otherwise, when you have the safest ward in the city of Ottawa with the least crime, well, that's contradict what you're just saying, because you want police, more police presence, oh, and you I'm have no crime I'm talking about no what activities. the residents that you yourself I was heard, there, I was there and they the raised significant concerns I was at about the, and the I lack of police thing. presence. But obviously that is spend, not my no, opinion. That no, is the you're, residents you're, of our ward. You're spending the idea is to your benefit, which is absolutely wrong. Not That's at not all. What I, I'm I was talking about residents. Okay. Okay. That's time. Uh, okay. I asked you the question, Judy Vargatas, so you get the final 30 seconds on this topic. I would like to say, in hearing from residents going door to door and at the consultation, that West Carlton March residents are not being well served. Before amalgamation, we had dedicated police officers, and now, in most instances, we do have to expect police to come from the Huntmar station. That is not appropriate. As my colleague mentioned, people require services more quickly, and I think it's very important that we look at our priorities and make improvements. Okay, thank you. We'll move to the next question, which I'll direct to Eli El Shantiri. Has City Council sufficiently addressed rural issues and respected the diversity of rural wards in its decision making over the past four years? And what would you do differently going forward? 
I, I believe we come a long way from 2003. Yes, the amalgamation was forced on a lot of people, but our area was not one of the areas was forced on. We have a referendum and 74% of the people want to join the amalgamation. Since the amalgamation, a lot of things changed, but changed for the better. Yes, rural residents still receive a good service from the city, and we don't pay what the city dwelling pay. We don't pay full fire service, we don't pay for transit, and quite honestly, we, we, we do very well as a partner in the city. We receive over $10 million on the average a year since 2003 for our road and our culvert and our infrastructure. Okay, it's open to all of you on this topic. I would beg to differ quite strongly, once again, in hearing from residents and in living in this ward and driving on our roads, that our roads have done nothing but get worse and worse since amalgamation. Your own Agricultural and Rural Affairs Committee came out with a report that said that road conditions had deteriorated since amalgamation. And I'd like to point out that the rural economy in Ottawa produces over $1 billion in GDP, of which $400 million comes from the agricultural sector alone. Alone. We farm over 300,000 acres with farmers and employ over 10,000 people. And despite that fact, we do not receive adequate services from the City of Ottawa. I have seen it with my own family, my husband and children. We don't have access to recreational opportunities that others do. We don't have access to transportation choices. When it comes to the amalgamation um, question, way back when, 2003, unfortunately, or earlier, um, it was the same thing as the stormwater tax fee. I went to the City of Ottawa meetings down on Terry Fox Road. Um, they gave you three choices. All of them were saying, you're going to get it, one way or another. And I wrote on them, each one of them, no, 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 put my name, address, telephone number, everything on the bottom of the page, flipped it over and kept going and tell them exactly why it should not be applied. It should not be applied because the people out in the rural areas have lots of land. They are controlled by the Drainage Act. This stormwater fee is nothing more than a tax grab on the rural people. You really got to start, stay informed, stand up, give a vote to a person who wants to repeal this fee on your property so that you can save some money. Okay, so when we talk, only go okay, one when way, we talk about well, recreation, tough. James, and, and my colleague here to my right talk about recreation, I'm not sure what recreation she's talking about. She lived less than 100 meters from a community center under utilized. In she lived about a 10, conversation listen, that I had talking, in Constance listen, Bay. You have to learn not to interrupt when somebody speaking. And I know you're going to have a problem with this. Because when somebody speaks, you have to listen, and then you can speak. Because I didn't interrupt you when you spoke. So please, try to respect that process. So you spoke about lack of recreation in our For the area. residents of West Carlton, not myself. For, Correct. For, so the resident For of the West residents. Carlton, yes. we have quite a bit of recreation, and we do a tremendous job in, in recreation. As a matter of fact, the community center who People you live 100 meters away from, they, if they can remove themselves to, to from win, the city of Ottawa. From, you see, we can have a discussion if you're going to keep interrupting. We really have to you, respect you the, the last it's a 30 debate. seconds. It, it is, is a the debate. debate. And it is I, the debate. I, I won't okay. have you hog up all the time. That's right. Okay. And in fact, so, the residents so, of Constance Bay, okay. make your point, you know perfectly make it quick. well, met with you in 2012 because they looked at the recreation guide and they identified 35 recreational opportunities in the city of Ottawa guide that they would like to see come to West Carlton. As a result of that meeting that you attended, nothing changed. That they were told, well, the city couldn't find employees who would drive out as far as West Carlton. We could hire West Carlton youth. We could offer programming to West Carlton children. Okay, that is time. And Eli El Shantiri, you do have the last 30 seconds, so go ahead. Thank you very much, Mark. Resident, in, in 2012, we had a meeting in West Carlton, especially in Constance Bay. And the result of that meeting, we additionally built a 6,000 square meters to the community center. We raised the money, and I didn't see neither one of my colleagues on those barbecue or any of those event fundraising for the community association. We raised a million and a half dollars for our community to build that community center, and we do have programming okay. all year long. That's time. Thank you. We'll move to the next topic. I'll direct this question to James Parsons. Uh, should the City of Ottawa opt out of having private cannabis stores? And if not, would you support having a cannabis store in your ward? 
Oh, I don't even want to speak to that question. That's that's a federal level thing going on. I'm, I'm running for councillor in the city of Ottawa. Um, in reference to what Mr. El Shantiri just said about the community centre in Constance Bay, um, I lived through that time period. They did not raise all the money they needed to raise to get the uh, community centre done. Um, Mr. Watson stepped forward, I believe, and made the statement during the 2014 campaign to say, no, that will happen, Eli, that'll happen, you can count on it. And that is exactly what ended up happening, but did they raise that money? I never saw it, and I never read it in the paper. Okay, it's open to all of you on this question of cannabis, which is a decision for the City of Ottawa. It's not a federal government decision. The City of Ottawa has the opportunity to opt out of private cannabis stores. That's what the provincial government has told the city. Uh, so it is a relevant question to residents in the community. So it's open to all of you on that. Go ahead. Yes, wealthy. I, I will interrupt you when you speak. I hope you. you'll do the same. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So. Yes, absolutely. I do support the need for uh, retail shops in the Ottawa area. As a former small business owner myself, I know that small businesses are responsible people and they are very careful in how they run their businesses effectively and well within the law. It is unrealistic to imagine that Ottawa would ban such retail shops. You've also asked the question of whether I would support them in our ward. In consultation with people in this ward, including healthcare providers, we understand that it is necessary to offer access to a now legal product, whether we like it or not. There is legislation in place to make sure that these stores are not anywhere near our children and youth. However, if we make it impossible for our residents to access this, they will simply turn to illegal and unregulated sources. That is not going to keep our children and youth and our communities safe. Therefore, I fully support the City of Ottawa and the Mayor, who is suggesting that we will do extensive consultations in the city to make sure that these stores are well regulated and located in places where they will serve the public well without so, putting others at risk. Thank you. So the mayor called about the consultation. I believe we don't need to have a stores everywhere. My colleague ran a business for a few years. I own business for 33 years in the city of Ottawa. And I can tell you today there's less than 1% goes with buying alcohol outside the LCBO in this province. So we need to regulate who can sell this product because we don't want, would you like to have a store next to where you live and next to a no, high school? Absolutely, so and let, I trust let, our let, council. Yeah, let's, let's make sure, let's make sure these areas are sold in, 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 a, in a body where they can be controlled and also they can be accessible to the community. Are you but suggesting at the same we time, not have it in West Carlton March? I suggest it should be controlled by, by a body similar to the LCB to make sure people buy this product, they get But ID. that decision is out of our hands. I don't know of anywhere in but West Carlton that this is a big issue. I, I really don't believe there is a market for it. Um, and if there is, it would be the major metropolitan areas, either Constance Bay or We would Carp. simply be perpetuating um, a lack of access that we already have and that in my door-to-door, -door, pe people, people can are drive telling wherever me they need to they drive to access, access it. If they not really want it, they'll go there. everybody can drive. Not everybody has access to a vehicle at all times. In West and Carlton, it is if you now don't have a car, you're not going a very legal far. It's product. a long walk. It is a legal product that we must make available. And Folks, I understand even, even that you are legal, against having them even, even in the city of Ottawa, according even, to your survey. Even answers. if it's legal, it still has to be managed and it has Absolutely. to be controlled. And working and with the, the mayor and the councillors, we will consult adequately and proactively. And if the residents of West Carlton do not wish to see these stores, then I, as their city councillor, will listen to what they have to say and not represent my needs and my ideas or other councillors, but theirs. Okay, James Parsons, uh, you do have the final 30 seconds on this, so you're welcome to talk about it. All right. Um, it, it is obviously going to become a legal substance uh, for sale on certain parameters and certain volumes. and. I understand there's also going to be the illegal ability to grow f up to four plants at your own place. And I would assume that a lot of people out our way are probably going to take that option more than wanting to buy it. Um, but if, if people need a store, want a store, I'm more than able to listen and agree to where they can have it put. Okay, thank you.
Next question to Judy Vargatoth. Uh, you'll have 45 seconds. Uh, the city will move into phase two of light rail during the next term. What lessons have been learned from phase one and what needs to be done differently in the future? I think the number one lesson that I've learned is that we need more open communication about what is really happening. The citizens of Ottawa and West Carleton March are perfectly able to understand the information that is now being kept from us and we find out at the last minute for example that uh, that things will not start on time this is something that must have been known and in fact we understand from reading the paper that this was known by a number of city councillors ahead of time so the lesson for me with LRT is we need to inform and engage with our citizens it's an excellent 21st century mode of transportation we must have access to that as well in West Carleton March by appropriate connector services to the LRT. Okay, it's open to all of you now. So the LRT is the largest item the city of Ottawa or in the history of Ottawa is gonna happen. And we talk about communication. We communicate the LRT a lot more than any other file. Yes, but surprise is on the way and we didn't like it or we weren't happy about it, but we dealt with it and we're still dealing with it. Council receive monthly update about the LRT. We work together with our partner, the federal, the provincial government to bring the LRT to Canada and we are in a process. West Carton will always benefit from it because the less cars on the road, the benefit for us, the better for the environment. Also, we have cars that can go to the park and ride, got on a bus and got to LRT. The park and rides so, are over full. I use the park and rides. I'm a regular user as much as I can be for living in West Carlton March. I take the park and ride service and I take it into town to avoid parking and congestion. The, the LRT the is not ride, even being planned currently to Canada. News, the, uh, the park and ride is At under Eagleson use on aviation and Terry Fox Drive. Eagleson is full. Is but full. We have one on Car Pro. We have one on Terry Absolutely. Fox. And, and we have one on Innovation. On and it's and a maybe, wonderful maybe new should, service. Maybe you should use those as I well. I do use that one okay, as well. So now that Eagleson is over capacity, I use innovation. The question is about LRT, which mm -hmm. is not currently planned for Canada. We are, the, the phase two will bring it to Moody, to Moody Drive, which is the edge of Canada. So then what we need is to have appropriate connector services so that residents of West Carlton we March have, we have, can we get to the Moody station without a road, a bus that goes ways. along this way. All right. Uh, Eli El Shantiri, why don't you take the next 30 well, seconds? Actually, if, uh, if, if no, I'm, I'm asking Eli El Shantiri to. Well, to we, I haven't even had 30 seconds of this two minutes or three minutes. Can well, I not speak? Yeah, well, I was. You could you could speak. After I would that, like to speak because people, she will get the last 30 seconds. Well, we're we're wasting time now. The, there were two people talking at the same time, so I'm just trying to well, give. Which each is why of them I cut in because they kept going to finish. So Eli El Shantiri, you've got 30 seconds, and then you'll have some time. We have a dedicated line on a Queensway so the buses can go to Moody a lot quicker and a lot faster. Yes, the phase three of the LRT is, is connecting to Canada and also connecting to Barhaven. And we're all working about it because that will benefit the whole city as a whole. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. The LRT, way back when it was first uh, inaugurated, um, I made statements in the paper, in public, that you know it's not going to benefit West Carlton at all, virtually. A, a tunnel going from the west to the east in the city of Ottawa. Um, there are no connections to it except downtown buses. If I have to go there, I drive there. That's just the reality of situation from where I live in West Carlton. Okay, uh, why don't we stop there? I'll go back to Judy Vargatoth. You get the last 30 seconds on this topic. Thank you. So I am a big fan of the LRT. I think it is an important 21st century mode of transportation. My priority is my ward's priority and the resident's priority. How do we benefit from this massive investment? Yes, there are buses that go along the Queensway rapidly, but we don't live on the Queensway. We live on Dunrobin Road and March Road and Galetta Side Road, and we need to be able to access modern options for getting to the LRT, and that's what I'll be working for. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, we're now going to move to the closing statements, and once again, each candidate will have 60 seconds, one minute, and we'll do those in the reverse order of the opening statements, so we'll start with James Parsons. Go ahead. Alrighty. Um, I'll just read right from my flyer. I'm, I'm trying to reach every house in, in West Carlton delivering it, so if you've gotten a flyer, it was because I put it there personally. Um, weekly garbage collection, I want it redu uh, reinstated. 
Uh, I want no limit on the bags and I want to cancel the green bin program to help pay for that. Uh, that truck rolls down every week mm -hmm. to everybody's house. Cancel the stormwater tax fee to properties that have their own well and septic. I built my own house, I had to pay for my well, I had to pay for my septic, the permits, the site grade plan, the whole nine yards. Don't owe a dime on that. Um, initiate an elected hydro commissioner to try to get equity between Hydro Ottawa and Hydro One customers between West Carlton, March and the City of Ottawa proper. I would like no red light cameras, no photo radar cameras in West Carlton, March and I would like a, ceiling, a ceiling on city staff wages not to exceed the mayor's wage. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Eli El Shantiri, you're next. First of all, I want to thank Mark and Roger for this debate. I'm hoping that during this debate you were able to see that I have the experience, leadership, and established relationships needed to help lead this next term of council. Three of the biggest five your city councillor will have to handle this coming term are the official plan review, transportation master plan, and development happening in South March, which is going to increase the, the, the uh, 3,400 unit. It's going to bring more than 8,000 people to that area. Do you really want a complete, inexperienced councillor handling these important files? Do you really want someone with no experience in municipal government handling the city of $3 billion budget? I have proven track record of being physically responsible with your tax dollars. I have uh, years of experience and expertise managing, with, working with the city and managing the city budget. I hope I can count on your support. Thank you. Judy Vargatos, you have 60 seconds as well. It's time to stop moving backwards in West Carleton March. We must move ahead with new ideas that fit the needs of this unique rural ward and the people who live in it. The families, the youth and seniors, the farmers, the business owners. I will work closely with residents to develop and deliver cost-effective and innovative solutions. These will include better access to health care and police services, recreational opportunities, high-speed internet and jobs. Stronger representation at City Hall based on open and frequent communication with residents. Better road conditions, more transportation options that make sense for rural communities, and measures that boost safety for cyclists and pedestrians in villages and near schools. Representing and fighting for the people of West Carleton March as their city councillor will have my undivided attention, energy, and commitment. Residents of this ward deserve better, and together we can do better. Thank you. Thank you to all three candidates for participating in our debate for West Carlton March, and best of luck to you in the rest of the campaign. And I'll remind you that Election Day is October the 22nd. That's when you can vote, and you can watch live coverage of the results on Rogers TV, simulcast on 1310 News on the night of the 22nd, beginning at 8 o'clock. Thanks for watching. <laughs>